Good evening and welcome to Sunset News this Wednesday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Glenn Rashipura. And I am Diana Master. It's great to have you on the show, Diana Master. Your very first Sunset My show very in first. this format. Exactly. <laughs> it is yeah, beautiful. I, I, I'm excited to have you on the show. <laughs> Well, getting into the news today, the 2023 Swakopmund Street Fair successfully brought together hundreds of locals and visitors at the biggest street market in town. The street fair, which was previously known as the Kermis, took place from the 21st to the 23rd of December in Daniel Shongarero Street. The name chain came as an attempt to make the event more inclusive and to forego the cultural typecast that came with the Kermis culture. Linda Mupupa, the public relations officer of the Swakopmund municipality said, the town is moving in a new direction. We are being innovative and inclusive, and therefore the new name includes and invites everybody to be a part of the occasion. Another newly implemented element of the street fair is the relocation of the event. Now formally hosted at the amphitheater and parking lot in town, the Swakopmund Street Fair has since been moved to Daniel Shongarero Street, and as a result, the street was closed off for the duration of the event, creating a safe and free roam area for locals and visitors to enjoy. The event filled the street with various stalls from vendors all over Swakopmund and also welcomed vendors from numerous towns around the country. Many of the vendors mentioned that they have been a part of the street fair culture since it was first implemented several years ago. Local artist Diana Viljun and her paintings have been part of the street fair for 20 consecutive years. I do have to say it is beautiful to see that it is um, welcoming mm -hmm. to people from all walks of life, right? Yes. Mm. And the fact that they moved away from the Kermis, um, you know, name so mm -hmm. that it, it can be more inclusive. I bet it was inclusive, but people would feel like, oh, maybe this is for a certain type of tribe and, exactly. and so forth. And they moved away from that. I, I highly commend them on that. And also just the fact that it is creating employment, like for that brief period of time, mm -hmm. people are not relying on their nine to five jobs exactly yeah. and also remember the festive season people are spending a lot of money it's mm -hmm. great to capitalize on, on that. that exactly definitely all right now getting into our next story vice president Angolo Mbumba said all Namibians and visitors in the country should take a moment and reflect on the birth of Jesus and emulate his work of promoting peace Mbumba made the remarks when he delivered a Christmas message saying the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ his divine work on earth was meant to bring peace and love to all humanity he said Christmas is meant to be a time of peace, love and joy and all over the world people come together to celebrate and share the joy of the birth of Jesus Christ. Bumba added that Namibians should use the Christmas season to share with the less fortunate brothers, sisters, the elderly and children who do not have the means to buy what they need to enjoy Christmas. While we enjoy social and political tranquility in Namibia, millions of our fellow human beings elsewhere are subject to threats of wars and social and political upheavals in various parts of the world. Our brothers in Palestine, particularly in Gaza, face the extreme brutality of a terrible war, Bumba said, adding that they too join those calling for the cessation of hostilities and the silencing of guns so that the people of Palestine can enjoy peace in their own homes and land. He said the Namibian government is calling upon those involved in wars to uphold the fundamental values of human rights, love for mankind and justice. Wow, that's a powerful message. It I is. I would say it's 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 we should take in our privilege you mm -hmm. know the fact that we can enjoy our holiday the festive season especially with family members and people that we love while elsewhere you know people are literally uprooted from their homes they've lost loved ones um it's really sad you know um, what's happening in palestine what's happening in ukraine um and so we need to also you know take into consideration that um you know sometimes you're fortunate to have some of these things exactly you know um a lot of the times we take these things for granted because they are always there or we think they're always there mm -hmm. until certain things happen that actually bring you back to reality mm -hmm. because as much as we are enjoying time with our loved ones we're celebrating the birth of jesus christ not everyone in the world is fortunate enough to mm -hmm. celebrate to with their loved ones because mm -hmm. their loved ones have so brutally been taken away Away from them and also not just looking at an international scale even that message that he said that we need to look out for our less fortunate brothers and sisters how many people are out there begging on the streets 
right? It's really, and, really sad. That, and, and also how many of them had a decent meal during Christmas? Exactly. You know? And it goes back to what you were saying. People are spending a lot of money on Christmas. Mm. But these are just for these earthly and very, it's, it's mm. really instant gratification. But there's someone out there that actually needs mm. a proper meal. Just take even just, just a tenth of your salary and just go give to that one homeless person on the street. Yes, and and if more of us, you know, joined hands up, mm-hmm. I think Michelle Nawatis likes to, you know, emphasize this message. The moment the community works together, you know, if all of us, let's say the tenth of us that work here, mm-hmm. you know, put together money and we help the the homeless mm-hmm. and so forth, that goes a long way. It would make the world of a difference. So please, this festive season, do take some time out just to make sure the next person who can't afford these luxuries at least has. A decent meal. We're not talking five star Michelin, three star mm. Michelin restaurant or whatever. No, just a decent meal that maybe you cooked for mm. Christmas. Just take some leftovers, give to that next less fortunate person. Well, getting into our next story on a rather sad note, the four people who died in a road accident on Sunday between Oshuarongo and Otavi have been identified. The four people died when a vehicle they were traveling in collided head on with a VW Polo sedan, which was overtaking a truck. The Polo, which may only carry a maximum of five people, had seven occupants, according to a police report into the accident. Other occupants in both vehicles sustained serious injuries and were taken to the Oshuarongo State Hospital for treatment. In another incident, a 48-year-old man and a three-year-old died in a car accident which took place on Friday night on the road between Otavi and Sumib. This after the seven-seater sedan they were traveling in collided head-on with a Toyota Baki, which was overtaking a truck and collided with the oncoming seven-seater vehicle. Now the two victims died on the spot, while two, five other people from the same vehicle as the victims sustained what police described as serious injuries. The driver of the Baki was arrested and charged with reckless or negligent driving. A police report in the incident states it is alleged that the victims, together with the other girls, went to do laundry at the riverbed and the victims' bodies were retrieved from the pond by the community members and the police. Their next of kin have been informed and police investigations continue. It is festive season and unfortunately with the festive season a lot of accidents, a lot of unfortunate tragedies Mm. happen and really we just do urge everyone out there, whether you're traveling, whether you're at home, to not necessarily partake because festive Mm. season is known as silly season. Mm. Yeah, yeah. For, for, People are being reckless. Exactly, especially mm. on the roads. Um, you know, we. This is the you know the song that we sing every festive season. You know, we want to see you next year. Please be safe on the roads. Um, but unfortunately not a lot of people heed mm. um, you know this message and also it's also very sad to hear that children are drowning this festive season um, this is not the first story that we're hearing of you know kids drowning and it's really really sad you mm. know we want to make sure that we are with our loved ones we're enjoying the festive season and that we are not necessarily mourning people during the festive season so yeah we do urge all of our viewers to do take extra caution be it on the road be it at home wherever it may be 2024 is just around the corner and we would definitely love to have you with us in the new year all right that brings us to the end of our top stories now after the break in our story of the day segment we look at the penguin angling bonanza which took place in hinty's bay stay tuned Zelfs met Frans Beekes, uh, africhter en dan ook verteenwoordiger van Sparta Rugby Club. Hoe gaan het coach? Ja, baie goed, baie goed onszelf. Ja, dit gaan goed coach. Coach, uh, hoe leuk dinge hier by die taxis hier jaar? Ja, ek denk is een baie goeie opkomst tot so ver. Ek hoop maar die, die getalle groei nog en die voete kom. Ja. Maak het een lekker van die en allemaal geniet het. Dit is vakantietijd, so hoekom maar nou nie? Ja, sê. Hoeveel spanne het hier hier jaar coach? Ons het 12 spanne. Die competitie lijkt redelijk goed, so die, ja. ek denk die gasborrels, die wenner van verlede jaar, ja. gaan een goeie, goeie teenstand kry, so ons kyk maar wie wen. Ja, sê, uh, hoe laat het jylle afgeskop en 
Hoe word, in wat een formaat word die competitie hier jaar gespeeld? Die registratie was so 8 jaar geweest, ons het so kwart oor 9 begin, om ja. allemaal kans te gee om in te skryf. Ja. Die formaat is, ons speel so 3 rondes, ja. wat allemaal om genoeg speeltijd kry en hulle self te kan bewys. Daarna gaan ons na een plaatafdeling toe, en een, en een bekerafdeling toe, semifinale, ons maak die quarterfinals, anders raak die dag te lang, ja. en daar vanaf is het finals. Het die, uh, die spanning in groepen verdeeld? Ja, ons het twee groepen. Ja. Twee groepen, hulle speel maar Oekruis tegen elkaar, dat het nog nie sterk en sterk en swak en swak aan elkaar nou blij nie, laat hulle aan bykie die kans staan ook om, om dan my game te win, of as jy nou nie so goed is nie, ja. Ja, koud, hierdie competitie is beslis een hoogtepunt vir, vir baie van die spelers aan die kus. Uh, ek meen, hoe lyk het hierdie jaar? Ja, ek denk het lyk baie goed. Kijk, die mense geniet het mos, is mis in die, in die see en is in die ja. son en is ja. in die tent en is muziek. So dit lyk baie goed en dit ek dink is baie goed vir henties, uh, vir die ekonomie, bykie geld instoot, die mense bykie koop en betaal en so en so, ek dink is baie goed, ja. Ja, en wat doen dit vir die span, Sparta? Nee, ek, uh, ek dink ook die, die inkomste wat ons hieruit genereer en die, 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 die borge wat ons gekryd is baie goed vir die, vir die rakbie self, so, want ja. die geld word ons automatisch gebruik, bykie ontwikkeling, en dan is ook met die, met die veld is sy, sy herstel en recht maak, al die onderhoud, dit is al baie, ja. No eat. Now getting into our economic news, half of the companies and groups expressing interest in developing the Trans-Kalahari Railway between Botswana and Namibia as a public-private partnership are Namibian, according to the Trans-Kalahari Railway Project Management Office. They are Hilo Group, West Coast Energy, Mega North Holdings, Fulbright Investment, Grand Road, and the Trans-Kalahari Railway Initiative Consortium, a collaboration between Namibia and South Africa. The railway will run for about 1,500 kilometers from the coal fields at the Mambula in Botswana to the port of Valvis Bay in Namibia. One Chinese company has expressed interest, namely China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation. The other companies on the list of the 12 are NGE Contracting France, Oroscom Construction from Egypt, Lesetti Nehewa Investment JV from South Africa, and Rail Vickers Nigam Reda from India, as well as the Nation's Capital Projects slash 75 Investment from South Africa. Now, according to the timeline published by TKRPMO, the pre-qualification stage will now run from December to February. The request for proposals will be issued in March. The development phase is expected to begin in January 2025. Wow. I'm actually very happy that, you know, 50% of the bidders are from Namibian, uh, Namibian companies. And I obviously hope that a Namibian company wins the bid. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We will be keeping an eye out on the situation and, of course, updating you as, um, as it progresses. All right, we'll now take a look at the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades at 23.55 to the British pound, 20.50 to the euro, 18.55 to the US dollar, and 2 Namibian dollars and 60 cents by 2 and 1 Chinese yuan. Looking at commodities, all commodities are up safe for Brent crude oil, which took a dip of 0.17%, now trading at 80 US dollars and 34 cents per barrel. After the break, we'll be getting into your international news. Do stay with Sunset News. We've always had the bravery to stand up for what is Namibian. From protecting our homes to fighting injustices, we still celebrate what it means to us and raise a glass to those who show their bravery. No matter how they take on the world, with all this potential in the land of the brave, what will you do to make this Namibia your Namibia? 
Getting into international news, Apple on Tuesday appealed a decision to ban imports of its Apple Watches based on a complaint from medical monitoring technology company Massimo after U.S. President Joe Biden's administration declined to veto a government tribunal. The tech giant also filed an emergency request on Tuesday for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit to halt the ban. It asked the Federal Circuit to pause the ban at least I until U.S. Around. Customs and Border Protection decides whether redesigned versions of its watches infringe Massimo's patents and to put the ban on hold while the court considers Apple's request. The customs office is due to make its decision on January 12th, Apple said. You can use double tap to answer a call. Let me show you. Hi, Deidre. Hey, Jeff. I would say like it's the small guy beating the big guy going up against the, the tech bully in terms of the way it's viewed. If you look at this patent issue with Massimo, they were hoping, Apple, that the U.S. government, the Biden administration, would ultimately reverse this in terms of what's been happening on the Apple Watch. Instead, they did not. They did not veto it, which is why Apple needed to appeal. Look, this is a PR black eye more than a financial black eye for Apple. But if they don't stop here, it could expand and be a brush fire. Apple Watch helps us stay healthy, active, and connected. <clears throat> Apple essentially, in, in the eyes of this vendor, took its patent and basically violated it. That's in the Apple Watch, especially around oxygen and some other areas on health. And it's something where this has happened before, but ultimately, the small guys stepped up. And they won. And I think that's really what's been so jaw-dropping here for Apple to lose this, especially into a holiday season. Okay, bye. It uses a machine learning algorithm to detect the unique signature of tiny movements and changes in blood flow when your hand and fingers perform a double tap. Well, I think we need to see if they're successful on the appeal and the next step when the customs looks at this January 12th, that's another patent issue. If they ultimately lose this, I mean, this could be potentially a billion dollars of sales in 2024. But for Apple, it's less about the financial. It's more about the PR and what this means from a patent perspective. That's why they're fighting this tooth and nail, especially with the Biden administration not vetoing Stick around, we'll be right back with our, with our weather predictions with Glenora Shapura. Enjoy the season's best prices all month long at Vurman Brock. Two litre farmhouse ice cream for $44.99. One litre fruit tree juice for just $18.99. Two litre Coca-Cola original for just $19.99. 2 liter WB cooking oil for only $64.99 and 2 kg Sky hand wash powder for $39.99. See all our specials online at www.furmanbrock.com. Right, it's time to take a look at the weather predictions. Katima Mulilo can expect some showers with a minimum of 19 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius. Oshakati can expect sunny weather with a minimum of 21 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius. Handys Bay can also expect sunny weather with a minimum of 16 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 20 degrees Celsius, while Rehoboth can also expect sunny weather with a minimum of 18 degrees Celsius at a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius. After the break, we bring you international sports news.
1994, a group of Namibians saw a need for a grassroots Namibian medical aid fund. The Prosperity Medical Aid Fund was born right here, among the hardworking fishermen and ship workers of Wavish Bay. In 2001, in order to establish a fund focused on its members that put their health first, the fund formed its own identity away from its administrators, Prosperity Health. It was named Renaissance Health as a symbol for the renewal of medical funding in Namibia, a transformation in health. Renaissance members voted for their first board of trustees who would carry the fund forward for all Namibians. By 2010, Renaissance had members across the entire Namibia, a fund founded by Namibians for Namibians to ensure access to quality healthcare. In 2020, RMA was put to the test with COVID-19, supplying life-saving oxygen machines door-to-door -to, -door to members when our Namibian hospitals were full, saving many of its members' lives. RMA is not just a medical aid fund, it's a partner in health for its members, whether through our chronic compliance programs or yearly wellness checkups. RMA was started by you, it belongs to you. A proudly Namibian first medical aid fund providing the best in care for all Namibians. Renaissance Health Medical Aid Fund, serving Namibia since 1994, RMA. Your health comes first. Starting off our international sports news, Rasmund Holyun capped Manchester United's thrilling fight back from two goals down as the Denmark striker netted for the first time in the Premier League to seal a dramatic 3-2 win against Aston Villa on Tuesday. Eric Ten Hag's side were in danger of another damaging defeat when goals from John McGinn and Leander Dendonka put Villa in control by half-time at Old Trafford. Well, that does bring Manchester United up to sixth position on the table with Liverpool's of course leading and Arsenal closely behind with just 40 points right I, behind them. I know Ashwan is not going to be happy about this or will he? Be? The elephant <laughs> has fallen from the tree. I mean that exactly. is been a running joke that Arsenal being on top <laughs> of the log is exactly. like an elephant sitting exactly. on top of the tree. <laughs> exactly. It's definitely sad news for Arsenal <laughs> fans. Now we're moving on to our next story. Bangladesh won the toss and put host New Zealand into bed in the opening game of their three-match 2020 international series on Wednesday in Napier. New Zealand suffered a nine-wicket defeat to Bangladesh on Saturday in the final one-day international on the same ground, but took the three matches series 2-1. Well, kudos to them. Kudos to them. Now back to some more Manchester United news. Manchester United said it could coerce Jim Radcliffe under certain circumstances to divest his ownership in the British soccer club at least 18 months after the billionaire closes his acquisition of a 25% stake in the company. It was disclosed in a regulatory filing on Tuesday but did not specify the circumstances. Manchester United's filing also said that for three years after the tycoon's deal closes, any potential sale of the club's solicited by its American owners, the Glazer family, will need to fetch at least $33 per share for Radcliffe. All right. And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. How was your first um, Sunset News, especially in this format now? I absolutely enjoyed it, yes. I do have to say. Um, yeah, it was great to have you as a co-host. Of course, you can be catching us tomorrow, same time, same place. From me, Glenn Rashipura. And me, Diana Master. This has been Sunset News. Don't end your day without us.